Test Diagnostic. Hello everybody and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to look at a game that was played between Mir Sultan Khan and Vera Menchik as Black in the year 1930. Now I've always found Mir Sultan Khan a very interesting chess figure um, and I'm going to read something from Wikipedia here. Uh, it says, when Sultan Khan first traveled to Europe, his English was so rudimentary that he needed an interpreter. Unable to read or write, he never studied any books in the game, and he was put into the hands of trainers who were also his rivals in play. He never mastered openings, which, by nature empirical, cannot be learned by the application of common sense alone. Under these adver adverse circumstances, and having no known international chess for a mere seven years, only half of which was spent in Europe, Sultan Khan nevertheless had few peers in the middle game, was among the first, the world's best two or three endgame players, uh, this isn't in there, but he beat uh, Capablanca, and one of the world's best ten players. This achievement brought admiration from Capablanca, who called him a genius, an, acc an accolade he rarely bestowed. Alright, so I've looked at quite a few of his games um, over the years, and the reason I find him interesting is obviously because he didn't really study chess, and... Uh, he just knew how to play. Now, when you look at it deeper, though, and I'm going to show this game as a perfect illustration, um, I'm calling him the genius who understood peace activity. And I really think that was the heart of him being able to play just without studying. So let's see how that applies. Now, when you play chess, when, pe when a normal person plays chess, I completely understand that um, it's very tactically complicated and it seems to be a mess of variations. But you have these rare people like Capablanca or Mir Sultan Khan who just understand that they understand the essence of chess as peace activity. Maybe they can't verbalize it or teach it that clearly, but they do understand that. So let's see what happens as white. Now, Vera Menchik was a woman's world champion at one point, so she's a very strong player in her own right. It starts with E4, C6, uh, D4, and then the Karo Khan, which... Uh, obviously, Mir Sultan Khan, he probably knew some variations at this point, uh, but he doesn't really play anything standard here. So e4 is attacked um, just from a logical standpoint. Now, I had a commenter uh, comment about uh, he loses in the opening. It's not really an opening knowledge problem. It's the fact that you're not uh, applying the main opening principles of getting all your pieces out, castling, and then connecting your rooks. You'll see how Mir Sultan Khan just follows those. And the reason that you make a mistake in the opening is because you don't pay attention to your opponent's threats. Now, if you just have your idea that you're going to you're just going to develop and there's going to be no no threats along the way in the opening, then you will make a tactical mistake. So you need to watch what your opponent's doing. And we'll see how uh, Sultan Khan does that here. So he sees that E4 is attacked. If you have no opening knowledge, you can simply figure out a way to either trade the pawn or protect it. So both theoretical moves, so, uh, Sultan Khan just takes. All right, trades. Now you could develop the knight or the bishop, just develops the bishop. Very simple. All right, so we see here, again, if you just try to do something, uh, you could play bishop, you could play the pawn, or the knight. There's a lot of different moves. Sultan Khan just chooses a less active move, but still very solid. Just plays c3, protecting the pawn. Queen develops, knight develops. Again, then I could go here, um, but black could pin it, so he probably didn't want that. And it also prepares something like knight to f4, or developing the knight another way and starting a kingside attack. All right, so, so we see here again, here's a perfect example of peace activity, hitting the queen with a tempo and developing a piece. Now, black could play here and then threaten this, um, and if he did, that would be a perfect example of paying attention in the opening. Now, if he just developed, then black wins a pawn, right? So the correct move would just be something like queen to c2, developing your queen as well as protecting and noticing black's threats in the opening. And I see, like, when, if I play a 1500 on light chess or something, that they make th those mistakes all the time, and they might think it's an opening error, but it, it's not opening. Uh, it's just they didn't pay attention to some simple threat that it doesn't take a genius to see. All right, so let's go back. Contest the bishop, and now uh, Sultan Khan just maintains attention and brings it back. Now, if black takes at any point, um, it does double his pawns, but it also gives the rook 
Um, or even if the rook is not on the open file, uh, the, the king, if he castles, could go here and get out of the way. Uh, basically, it gives white the open h file, increasing his activity further. Knight develops. Now we see the knight develop again. And he could have castled. Um, castles. Now, here's an interesting point in the game. So, Sultan Khan could just castle, but he sees that his opponent is about to free himself with e5. Now, if black plays e5, there's going to be some pawn trade, um, and then, more importantly, black gets the light square bishop as well as the rook out. <clears throat> so, an important point about peace activity is you don't just want to develop your own pieces, you want to restrict your opponents as well. And if you find something in the opening, or find a chance in the opening to do that, then you definitely should. So, the move f4 is perfectly logical in that aim. It looks slightly weakening, but Black's, or White's going to castle kingside anyway, and he probably wants the open f-file, uh, which would prepare f5 as well. So a very simple and logical and powerful move. Um, maybe if you didn't understand what I just said, if you just looked at this game, you would miss that point of f4. All right, so then the knight comes in. Now notice Black is... Uh, basically wasting time and not developing all of his pieces. She's basically very it's a it's a woman. Uh, she's not developing the light square bishop or the rook. And also attacking this uh, bishop and pawn doesn't really do much because if black ever takes, white gets a double pawn, but uh, they also get the open h file against the king. So there's benefits and negatives in every position. Castles, and now again, f5, neglecting her own uh, queenside development. All right, so here we see white just uh, basically developing the last piece and also preparing to bring the queen in and form this battery on against the king side. Now black takes, trading off one of the few active pieces on the king side and another defender on the king side, as well as opening that h file uh, and also allowing uh, white to play something like g4 eventually. Another wasting move, basically trying to defend the, uh, or at least go over and start an attack on the king side, but you know what? The pieces aren't developed enough for black to do that. You're not gonna attack this white uh, king with only a lone queen. Let's see what happens. All right, so. Uh, obviously going for the e5 or the g5 square. Now we see another move by an already developed piece back to try to control this square. There's really no good move in this position except to play bishop to d7, bringing the rook in, um, even allowing something like this. Black can eventually chase it off, uh, but you really you don't, you don't want to bring your pieces back and try to control squares, and white already has a big advantage in this position. Bishop back, and now we see the final developing move in the opening, queen to c2. So the rooks are connected, the king is castled, all the pieces are ready to form a battery against the king, and g4 is coming very quickly. And then we see g4 already. So this slightly weakening move, and these two completely inactive pieces, actually I would say three, because this knight's not doing much, are the demise of Black's position and result in a very quick loss. So let's see how this develops. Takes, um, really, there's no good move. Um, definitely not takes, I don't know, something like here, or even just allowing the loss of a pawn um, and just trying to develop. So at this point, it's hard to say what Black should do. Uh, white, but definitely not open the position for the light square bishop uh, here. All right, so the knight comes in and then trades, allowing another open file. Another seriously wrong decision by Black that shows they don't understand peace activity as well as mere Sultan Khan. Now, if Black tries to come in and has some latent threats of something like g3, it just doesn't work at all. Uh, something like this would happen. Check, trades. And now if black tries to defend that bishop by finally developing with the rook covering the f8 square, we see the suddenly winning 
knight to f4. And now hitting the queen at the queen moves back, we see a very quick mate. The queen would have to take, but obviously that's totally losing, giving away the queen for a knight. Discover check, double check, and then mate with the rook covering the knight as well as the f7 square. So it appears that these tactical moves just stem from Mir Sultan Khan's complete understanding of peace activity. All right, so let's go back here. So instead, after it takes, we see the queen back, and then a very interesting move hitting the queen back. Not just check first, but controlling the queen's activity. And now let's look at all these pieces here. The queen, the light square bishop, the rook. And let's, if we actually uh, divide this down the center here from the king's side to the queen's side, we see that the rook and the bishop are fighting against the rook, the bishop, the knight, and the queen. So it might appear that material is equal or black even has an extra pawn, but if you understand the chess position, you'll see that black is completely screwed here uh, from basically the queen and the knight coming in versus these completely inactive pieces. And this is where the heart of peace activity really comes into play. We're fighting against the king. We're trying to checkmate the king. And because of that uh, element of the game, you need to know which part of the board and how active your pieces are. All right, so rook takes, trading the only active defender, the f-file. And now it's queen, bishop, knight, and rook against here, against a bishop. All right, so check, and then knight to f4. And if we go back here, you see that the queen, two bishops, and rook are all on their initial squares, completely inactive. Check. And then after g5, it's all over after knight to g6 check. If the king takes, we see any square. He can move here, here, here. It'll be checkmate anyway. And the game ended um, after the king comes up and then takes anyway. There's nothing, there's no way to stop check and mate coming in. And if the queen takes, it's check and mate. So black just resigned at this point. A very interesting crush by uh, the former woman's world champion against a genius who never studied the game. Thanks for watching and I hope you subscribe and follow along for more videos. And I'll see you again in the future. Bye bye.